again this evening even for that which you have on the table for us thank you because it is rich it will enrich and uh, thank you because your people will be blessed in Jesus name amen amen, amen. praise amen. the Lord hallelujah so I want to welcome us to another edition of Fifth round table we have a lot in stock today and uh, let's just um, start in earnest so I want to welcome pastor lawyer thank you, uh, let's read uh, from Genesis chapter 1 the book of beginnings Genesis chapter 1 I'll read from verse 1 to 4 and then other verses as we go on. So Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. 
and God divided the light from the darkness. Verse 6 to 9. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 10. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Verse 20, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly, after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God said, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. So notice that keeps recurring. I'm still reading. Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4. We're going to read from verse 18 to 30. So we're doing a lot of reading on fifth round table this evening. And when the child was grown, thus the child of um, uh, the Shunammite woman. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of a man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore will thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. Dry, nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I beat thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Camel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehaz his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehaz came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord had hid it from me, and had not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehaz, Get up thy lungs, take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of a child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. There's still another portion I want to read, but let's pause for now. Some thoughts must have been going through our minds. Those of us watching from home, when we began to read from Genesis chapter 1, and later on as we read from 2 Kings and um, chapter 4, some thoughts must have been going through our minds. Now let me bring it home. So that Pastor Lea can break it down for us. Does faith have a language? Does faith have a language? And if so, what is that language? From God's word that we have read. Does faith have a language? If we say yes, what is the language of faith? Help us, sir. Oh, thank, thank you so much, sir. Um, looking at the account in 2 Kings chapter 4, uh, we see expressly 
reflected from the utterance of the Shunammite woman, the language of faith. So I say in the affirmative that faith has a language. And um, that language from the accounts we have read is, it is well. It is the language of affirmation of the positive. A language of affirmation of the positive. Even if the conditions around suggest the contrary. Mm. So the situation at hand was that of a dying child. But the confession of faith was, it is well. So, we, we see that even if it's not going the direction we desire to go or we intend it to go, let us not join, join our voices to the voice of the negative but rather, let's see what it should be. It is well. It is well. Okay. Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> you have not touched on that. All right, sir. Elohim, the eternal creator, was mm. the one speaking. Yes. And the, the book of beginnings, Genesis, uh, captures what we call the law of the first mention. Mm -hmm. Any principle in the whole of scriptures that we will see, that we will learn, that will come across must Takes first be revealed from, from the book, the book of, beginnings. of beginnings. Yes. So even faith begins from the book of beginnings for us. Yes, sir. Because Genesis is the beginning of that which we see, of that which we know about God. God. Yes, sir. As contained in his word. Yes, sir. The beginning of God is not Genesis chapter 1 because God does not have a beginning. Predates. Now, everything that Elohim did by way of creation came about on account of, of faith. faith. Yes, sir. No faith, no creation. Mm -hmm. Now, faith cannot come on the scene if it is not released. Mm -hmm. If words are needed for the release of faith, those words must follow a pattern. pattern. Hallelujah. The pattern the words will follow uh, is referred to as a language mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. language reflects a culture mm -hmm. so the language of faith is a reflection of the culture of the kingdom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. each time God spoke in faith, faith the Bible says and it, it was, was so. so so the language of faith when at work makes that which was not seen to be seen, seen. Mm. makes that which was not existent to become existent, existent. Mm. makes that which was not visible to become visible hallelujah so the language of faith is the language of power, power. hallelujah the language of faith is the language of glory hallelujah it brings that which was previously unknown to the realm of the of known the Lord. hallelujah the language of faith so in the midst of crisis in the midst of our pressures, mm. daily pressures, because life by itself is designed to exact pressure on us. On us. Mm. Actually, the design of God for man is for man to thrive under pressure. Mm. If there's no pressure, there is no thriving. Mm. In the atmosphere, there's something called atmospheric, atmospheric pressure. pressure. Mm. For laboratory experiments to take place, there must be STP, they say standard, standard temperature, temperature and, and pressure. pressure. Without pressure, there's nothing we can do. Mm. As we sit here, there is pressure at work. Mm. Yeah, we're sitting, we're exerting pressure on the seats carrying us. Mm. Now, we, we run on pressure. So, faith is designed to make us victorious over pressure. Over pressure. Hallelujah. So, we need the language of faith. Calls can can those, you talk to us? Yes, sir. Calls those things that be not as, as though, though they, they were. Amen. That Amen. is the summary. Sir. Calls those things that be not as though they were. So, we see God, he kept speaking to the things that were meant to produce. And they heard and performed. Amen. Speak to it, it will hear, it will Amen. perform. Amen. Jesus spoke to the storm, the storm heard and adjusted. He spoke to the sea, the sea hard and it became calm. So pressures will come like Pastor said. All we need to do is speak to it and there will be alignment. There will be alignment. Now, now, for faith to be effective, 
We can speak words. It is not every word that we speak that creates effects. Effect. Mm. Words that we speak that we back up with our faith are the words that get things Things done. done. There are some other words we just speak and nothing happens. So we must learn the language of faith. In learning the language of faith, we use words that are backed up with faith Faith. that will make things happen. Happen. Mm. The storm could obey the voice of Jesus Mm. because there was faith in the voice that was was spoken. spoken. Hallelujah. 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 Dead, dead Lazarus Mm. could respond to the voice of Jesus because there was faith in the command that Jesus gave. Mm. At the tomb of Lazarus. Hallelujah. What was the command? Lazarus, come, come forth. forth. Mm. And he that was dead, dead came out bound, bound and now said, Lose him and let him go. Now, now, let me quickly add this. Some Bible commentaries say that if Jesus did not specify who was to come back from the grave that day by mentioning the name of Lazarus. Every dead person in paradise would have <laughs> come alive. Come alive. Would have Hallelujah. Come. Yeah. So he had to, it, it was specific, specific for Lazarus. Hallelujah. So for us to understand the power of faith <laughs> and the force in the language of faith, he had to specify, Lazarus, Lazarus. it is you. <laughs> come forth. Yes, Hallelujah. sir. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory. So there is specificity with faith. Exactly. That specificity. Address the issue as it is. Call it by its name. God did not uh, introduce ambiguity in creation. He spoke to the land uh, and he told the land what it should produce. He spoke to the sea. He told the sea what it should produce. Tell your children what they should produce. Speak to your business what it should produce. Speak to your whole life uh, and tell your life what it should produce. And they will hack him. They will. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I'm excited already. Hallelujah. And I believe that as simple as these things sound, you have gained a thing or two, two. or probably three today. Amen. Now, don't let it stop here. Yeah. Put those things to full use and see the Lord visit you in specific terms. Oh, Let me quickly read something again uh, to us since we uh, have a little more time. Uh, look at uh, the gospel of St. John chapter 11 I touched briefly on it a while ago uh, gospel of St. John chapter 11 by the way by the way sir yes, the prophet Elisha yeah. when he saw that the woman was in distress and was something about the child of a woman by the way from that second Kings chapter 4 that account we just read yeah. do you know that nothing negative ever came out of the mouth of the woman yes not to her husband when she asked for a rider oh. and a horse nothing, nothing negative, negative. Hmm. when she was addressing the rider of hmm. the chariot hmm. she said don't reduce your speed for me except, except I, tell I tell you she was not in a state hmm. she wasn't shouting hmm. she wanted hysterical Hmm. Her only child just died. Hmm. But there was this calmness about her. Hallelujah. She got to the prophet. Gehazi asked, well, Is everything well? She said, all, all is well. When she saw the prophet, she did not shout. She did not tear her clothes. She only said, Did I not say, Don't deceive, deceive your servant? Hmm. Did I not say, Don't lie to your servant? Nothing negative. negative. Hallelujah. All she said was, As the Lord liveth. And as your soul liveth, O prophet, I'm not going to leave you. you. So the Mm. prophet had no choice. That was great faith at At work. work. Hmm. Calmness in the face Face of of crisis. crisis. Because of confidence in God. God. Because faith is confidence in God. Confidence in the revealed word of God. God. Acting on the revealed word Word of of God. God. That's, That's faith. Hallelujah. And the same was what Jesus was pushing in the house of Mary and Martha mm. when Lazarus died yeah. John 11 11 mm. this thing said here and after that he said unto them our friend Lazarus yes. sleepeth but I go mm. that I may awake him out of sleep he called death sleep did he understand him so he had to explain to them in verse 14 mm. he said plainly unto them Lazarus, Lazarus is, is dead. dead that was when they knew what he was talking about Hallelujah. and if something if someone is asleep 
the person will wake up. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we, oh, human beings, felt he was dead. Jesus knew he was sleeping. Yeah. So faith sees things differently, differently from the way from we, other people see. see things. Mm. It's a language. Can you round up for us, sir? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm rounding up with the story of Lazarus. It might appear to have died. Mm. It might appear to stink by now. Mm. <laughs> Jesus said, roll away the stone. Mm. Martha said, by now it stinketh. Mm. No matter the state, whether fresh dead or by now it stinketh. Mm. As far as Christ is concerned, it sleepeth. It's just asleep. Come on, wake it up. Amen. Wake it up. Wake that business up. Amen. Wake that child up. Wake that career up. It's just asleep, not dead. Can you just relate with God's word Amen. and yield yourself Amen. to the language of faith? Amen. Hallelujah. So I command the greatness in you to find expression. Amen. I command the giant in you that has been asleep to wake up. Amen. I command your prospects that have been died to come alive. Amen. I command your hopes that have been buried to revive Amen. and stand again. Amen. And I decree and I declare a new beginning. Amen. It's a brand new beginning yes. for you. Amen. It's a brand new experience in your life. Amen. The, the moment is now. Yes. The hour is now. Amen. Enter into your fullness. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we'll see you again next week. Till then, keep the fire burning. God bless you. Uh, the broadcast continues. There's going to be a special number and God's word will follow after Amen. now. Thank you. God bless you. He's here. Oh, I know Jesus, He's here. I know Jesus, He's here. Oh, I know Jesus, He's here. I can see.
in our lives because we are exposed to the life in it. Lord, I receive grace for expression tonight and I receive the working of your spirit in the lives of your people. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I welcome us to uh, this short exhortation and I believe the Lord that will reach out to us and we all be blessed in Jesus' name. This evening, we are going to confess God's word together. So the title of the short message is, I am a seed. So please, can you say to yourself, I am a seed. Let's look at um, the book of Matthew, chapter 13, and um, we read verse 24. It's a parable that Jesus told, and it goes thus. Another parable put it forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. So, Jesus began his story of a man that sowed good seed. He qualified the seed as good. And he sowed the seed in his field. Let's look at verse um, 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. Verse 26, but when the blade was sprung up, which blade? The blade of the good seed. When the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tars also. So the man sowed the good seed in his field and um, in the process of time, the good seed sprang up and brought forth fruit. 
Amen. The expectation of any farmer. Hallelujah. Child of God, I want to, to confess again this evening. I am a good seed. And I spring up and I bear fruit. Hallelujah. The disciples didn't understand this parable, so they asked Jesus to explain. And explaining the parable, verse 37, Jesus said, in explaining the parable, he said, uh, he answered and said unto them, He that swear the good seed is the son of man. That's Jesus, the son of man. Then verse 38, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. So, there's no ambiguity about the parable. We know who the good seed is. The children of the kingdom. Or do I say we know who the, who the good seed are? The children of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So you and I in Christ Jesus, we are the good seed that Jesus sowed into the world. We are sowed as children of the kingdom in the world. And the Bible says we are good. We have the capacity to produce goodness. Hallelujah. And not only that, the Bible says we spring up and we have the capacity of bearing fruit. Child of God, you have no choice but to bear fruit. You have no choice than to, you know, be productive. Your life must just be productive. Because inherent in you as a seed is the capacity to be productive. Inherent in you as a seed is the capacity to spring up and the capacity to bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. Again, I want you to say to yourself, I am a good seed. Amen and amen. And you see, we are simply the replica of the pattern seed. Jesus is the pattern seed and we are simply a replica of this pattern seed. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 12 and verse 24, he says, Very, very, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. He was referring to himself, except the a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So as a pattern seed, God sowed his very best, his only. And that only the pattern seed, when he died, sprang and brought forth much fruit. And you and I are products of the fruit, that fruit. And we have become even seed in our own right. And so if we are the replica of the pattern seed, it therefore behoves us that we should do what the pattern seed did when it was on earth. We should be exactly what the pattern seed was when it was on earth. When Jesus was on earth, he was the seed on three planes. He was the seed on three planes. He was the seed of the woman. He was the seed of Abraham. He was the seed of of, of um, David, or um, may I say, he is a seed of the woman, he is a seed of Abraham, and he is a seed of David. And on these three planes, Jesus did um, uh, produce purples, he achieved purples. As a seed of woman, he achieved the purpose of actualizing deliverance for mankind. For the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman God was addressing the devil. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. So Jesus as a seed of the woman, you know, bruised crushed the head of serpent, even though the serpent bruised his heel. Jesus bruised the head of the serpent. Jesus decapitates the devil. And, that is, and that's why today we can lay claim to salvation. Because Jesus brought deliverance. He delivered us from the power of darkness. As a seed of woman, he actualized deliverance for humanity. He actualized deliverance for you and I. And listen, if you have to be the replica of that seed, that pattern seed, God has sold you into the field also to deliver. Hallelujah. So for this reason, you are manifest that you may bring the creature unto the liberty of your, you know, of your freedom, of your freedom, like Romans chapter 8 will say. So we are the, 
the, the replica of the patron saint as deliverer. We are the replica of Jesus as uh, the one that will take people from the bondage of Satan into the, you know, the, the freedom and the liberty of the glory of of Christ Jesus the Christ. So child of God, you are a seed and you are set even to produce deliverance as the word of God says. At another plane, you know, Jesus is said to be the seed of Abraham and Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16 the Bible says that now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made he said not he said not unto seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ so we see right away that Christ indeed is the seed of Abraham and what did he actualize as the seed of Abraham he actualized the promise hallelujah we have a promise in Christ Jesus Jesus is the yea and the amen of the promise that God gave to Abraham. Hallelujah. So if indeed you are you know, the, the replica of the pattern seed, then you have promise actualized in your lives. The promise is embedded in the blessing. The blessing is unto you. Galatians and chapter 3 and verse 14 said that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. We have the promise of the Spirit because the blessing is upon our life. Why do we have the blessing? Because we are the replica of the pattern seed. Hallelujah. In fact, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says it. He said, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and ears according to the promise. You are the activation of the promise in your life because you are Abraham's seed just like Christ is Abraham's seed. Because you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Because you are Abraham's seed, then you are ears according to the promise, the promise of life, the promise of longevity, the promise of prosperity. They are yours. Everything that was recorded as the blessing activated in the life of Abraham is yours. You have a right to heed because you are the seed. You are a seed. Hallelujah. So on that plane also, promise is activated upon your life as the seed and you must manifest it. Upon another plane as the seed of David, we have the actualization of royalty. The covenant of royalty in Psalm 89. In Psalm 89 and um and uh, verse, um, Psalm 89, verse 34 to 36 says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn, uh, sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. So we have royalty in perpetuation because Jesus, the seed of David, has come and has been enthroned. And you see, Jesus has brought you into that same royalty. How do I know? Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible says, And he has made you and I the seed. He has made you and I a kingdom of kings and priests unto his father. So he's not just the king alone. He has brought you as the seed also into royalty. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, you know, put it together. It puts royalty and priesthood together. And he said you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Seed of Jesus, seed of God. You are royalty. You are royalty. And I say again, you are royalty. And as a seed, you must manifest this. You must manifest this. As I said, you must manifest the pattern seed on those three planes. We must see in your life the, the evidence of deliverance from the power of darkness, from the power of sin. For this reason, the Son of Moses was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hey, the head of the devil was crushed. Hallelujah. So sin can have dominion over your life. So there must be no question of sinning because you are the seed, a replica of the pattern seed. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And as the seed of Abraham, you have the right to the prosperity of Abraham. So no lack. No lack. No lack. You have no you have no, you no business with lack. Every suggestion of lack must not be seen. As the seed of 
David, you have the covenant of royalty. Your life must speak royalty. You must manifest, therefore. Child of God, as those seed I'm talking about, you must manifest. If you must manifest, then this acronym must be, you know, your watchword. The acronym of the seed. The S, there you must sprout. Men should see you. The seed under the ground can't be seen until it sprouts. The evidence of sprouting is when the seed you know, brings up the blade. The blade must be seen. You must be enriched with the word of God. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. He said, let the word of God dwell in you richly. So the word of God must dwell in you richly. You must be enriched. You must be nourished for you to grow to maturity. Not only that, you must be empowered. You must be empowered. And who empowers? The Holy Spirit in you empowers you. Acts 1 8, he said that one day he said that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and you shall be my witness. The power to become is you no know, is resides in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit empowered. And the D, you must be deployed. After being empowered, you deploy. You are deployed. You are deployed. Men should see your life in beauty, in splendor, in radiance, because you are the seed reflecting the Life of the pattern see Jesus the Christ. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. We appreciate you because inherent in us is the power to manifest the glory. So glory we will manifest in the name of Jesus. For those listening to me and are not part of this equation, Lord, I pray by faith that they, will brought, they be brought in in Jesus' name. Everyone that is not in Christ Jesus and so is exempted from all of this, I pray that this hour they have their sins repented of and they come to Christ Jesus, they accept Christ into their lives and they, uh, they become fruit producers. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. I pray for you out there that every element of lack is swallowed up by the blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Good evening, church. We will bring you in the following announcements from Rock Media Studios. It's been another wonderful time of fellowship this evening, and we'd like to appreciate our online audience for always joining us. We appreciate Rock Media for a wonderful job. God bless you. we also like to appreciate our pastors for bringing another edition of Faith Roundtable this evening. God bless you, sirs. we like to appreciate those of us who joined Prevailing Prayers yesterday on all our social media platforms. Remember, you can always pay your fights and offerings online. Details will be displayed on the screen right now. Ensure you always share our broadcast with your contacts and let us spread the good news. You can always watch our TV broadcast tomorrow on BCOS Television Ibadan at 6.55 p.m. tomorrow. Ensure you do not miss it. Prepare yourself for another wonderful time in God's presence this Sunday. You can be a part of this service in person or you can join us online. If you'd like to join us in person, terms and conditions apply. Service starts from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Please note that couples celebrating their wedding anniversaries will be recognized this Sunday and every month from now. Let's be mindful of our hygiene protocols, please. Our kiddies' online video sessions are still ongoing. Parents, please take notes and keep encouraging them. Our rotational prayer and fasting for all activity teams are still ongoing. Heads of teams, please continue to coordinate on your WhatsApp platforms. Ensure you always confess Psalm 91 over you and your entire household. The words for the month shall be taken from 2 Chronicles 26 verse 15b and will be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, His fame spread far and wide, for the Lord gave him marvelous help, and he became very powerful. Now we take our confession. This month, I am marvelously helped unto exceptional impact in Jesus' name. August is my month of marvelous help. Always remember you are made for impact and touch someone positively. This remains our year of dynamic progress. Thank you once again for joining us this evening. God bless you.